Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be looking at everything related to the altitude indicator in the planes that you can fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll be looking at how the altitude indicator and barometer work hand in hand, how the vertical speed indicator comes into play, and a few other little bells and whistles that you get with the digital displays of modern aircrafts. I'll be using the Cessna 2A to demonstrate all the different features of the G1000 cockpit's altimeter. And I'll wrap up by comparing it to what you would get in an airplane with more traditional gauges like the Cessna 152. Let's get straight into it. It goes almost without saying that the altitude indicator tells you how high you are in the sky. I'm just taking off right now off with this beautiful sunrise. And as you can see, the number that's displayed at the middle of the altitude indicator in that black section is telling you your current altitude. It's telling you your altitude in feet, and in the default Garmin G1000, you can't change that. But in the working title mod, if you prefer to fly with meters, you can change it to that as well. The way that the altimeter works is that there are little holes in the airplane's body, which are called static ports. And there's a little sensor inside of those tubes of those ports that are able to measure your current altitude by determining how many air molecules are entering the tube. Once the sensor determines what that altitude is, it's going to send that information to the primary flight display so you can see it on the screen. The number that's displayed is still affected by something called barometric pressure, which is the force of the air against the surface at the point of measurement. Barometric pressure is going to vary based on weather conditions and your current altitude, and that has an impact on the value that the sensors are going to detect. By adjusting the barometric pressure on the altimeter, what you're actually doing is making sure that you're getting the right altitude reading. And as you can guess, that's pretty important considering that if you have the wrong altitude, you could very well end up either crashing into the ground or into another airplane that's flying at a similar altitude. You can adjust the altimeter's barometric pressure reading by turning the outer knob on the right hand side of the primary flight display where it says barrow. Barrow obviously is short for a barometer. You can either turn it clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what value you need to set it to. You can get the current barometer reading by tuning into the ATIS or AWOS frequency for your departure airport if you're using the built-in ATC. If you're flying with live weather instead, the easiest thing to do is to just bring the weather menu up and click on the METAR button that's going to be at the middle of the live weather screen. That's going to bring up another window where you can select an airport and it's going to show you the current METAR data at that airport. METAR is really just a standard way to describe the weather. In our case, since we're looking for the barometer reading, we're looking for the numbers that come after an A. So in this case, it's going to be A3019, which means I need to set the barometer in the airplane to 30.19. In theory, this value should match exactly what's being used in Flight Sim if you're using live weather. There is a shortcut you can use and you just have to press the B key. That's going to set your pressure to the local pressure where you're flying and it's going to make sure that it's always the right value automatically. I honestly end up using the shortcut key pretty often because it's just a really quick shorthand and it's a lot faster than listening to an ATIS report or going to look it up. In North America, you'd use the local barometric pressure for everywhere below 18,000 feet. Once you go over 18,000 feet though, that's when you should reset your altimeter to 29.92. 29.92 is actually what's considered to be the standard barometric pressure. So everyone above a certain altitude ends up using that barometric pressure to make sure that we can keep spacing properly and you should be well clear of any obstacles at that altitude anyways. So the most important thing you need to be watching out for is other airplanes getting into your airspace. Now, while you're climbing, you're also going to notice that to the right of the altimeter reading, there's also going to be the vertical speed indicator, which is telling us how fast we're climbing or descending through the air in the vertical direction. A high climb or descent rate can be uncomfortable even for sim passengers, so you'd want to probably use an initial vertical speed of about a thousand feet per second once you take off. But as you continue to climb towards your cruise altitude, you're probably better off to stick to something closer to 500 feet per minute all the way until you establish yourself at your cruise altitude, especially for non-pressurized airplanes like the Cessna 152. The same rule applies for descents. You probably want to stick to something around 500 feet. A faster, more pressurized airplane like the Cessna 28 that I'm flying right now or the TBM 930 can do a lot more than 500 feet per minute without causing any discomfort to your sim passengers. 
I regularly climb at something more like a thousand to fifteen hundred feet per minute and I try and plan my descent so that I can hold around eight hundred feet per minute. Next is the altitude trend vector which is going to tell you where your altitude is going to be in about six seconds. We saw the trend vector on the airspeed indicator as well and it's the same concept here. The trend vector can give you an idea of where your altitude is going and it can be a good indicator if you notice that it's not doing what you would expect. For example, if you've got the power down and you're expecting to be in a climb but the altimeter is barely gaining any momentum with the trend vector, there's probably something else going on that's preventing you from achieving the climb rate that you're looking for. The altitude that appears at the top of the altitude indicator in that slightly magenta color is what's set in the autopilot. You can adjust it using the alt cell knob on the autopilot controls and it's going to tell the autopilot what altitude it should level off at. As you get close to leveling off there's a little notch inside of the altimeter that's going to appear and it's going to point to that exact same altitude. The same is true for the vertical speed indicator. If you set the autopilot into vertical speed mode, you can see how many feet per minute you're descending on the actual tape in that black box, but you can also see the little C and pointer which tells you what you've actually set in the autopilot. There can be a discrepancy between what the notch indicates and what your vertical speed actually is. This is especially common when you're getting close to your target altitude that you've set the autopilot is automatically going to slow down your vertical speed as you get close to your target altitude. Finally, we've got the radar or radio altimeter, which appears when the calculated radar height is below 2,500 feet. This is different from what the actual altimeter is calculating, as it's actually a sensor that's detecting how far off from the ground you actually are. It appears on the primary flight display just on the left of the altimeter with the letters RA followed by the estimated radar height. The radar height is especially useful when you're flying in mountainous terrain like I am right now coming down for landing in Aspen. It's a sign that you're getting close to the ground and you need to be aware of your surroundings. There's also an audible warning that you'll be able to hear when you go below 500 feet on the radar altimeter and it can help to keep you situationally aware as well. If you're using the radar altimeter for landing like I am right now, you should still be aware of the runway's altitude just in case there's a problem with the calculated radar height. It's always a good idea to cross-reference what the radar height is telling you versus what you are seeing in the altimeter as well as the altitude that you're expecting the runway to be at. All right, let's move on to the steam gauge version of the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator. Before I get to that though, if you do get some value from this video, please make sure to hit that like button as it helps others to find the video as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Now, just like with the other instrument insight videos that I've done so far, the traditional altimeter and the traditional vertical speed gauge are a lot simpler than their digital cousins. You can tell what your altitude is by looking at the three different needles inside of the altimeter. The large needle is the hundreds of feet, the small needle is the thousands of feet, and the needle with the triangle at the top of it is the tens of thousands of feet. The vertical speed indicator is as simple as it gets as well. You can tell how many feet per minute you're climbing or descending, but that's about it. To set the barometric pressure properly in this airplane, you would turn the knob that's adjacent to the altimeter. When you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to see the numbers are going to change on the inside of the altimeter. On the right hand side you can see the barometric pressure in inches of mercury which is what's most commonly used in the game but if you're more comfortable with millibars you have that on the left hand side as well. You might have to zoom in a little bit to be able to set it properly because from the default view it's really hard to read the little numbers that are displayed on the inside of the altimeter. Alright that pretty much wraps up all of the details on the altimeter and the vertical speed gauge. I will remind you again, if you got some value in this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, like the majority of you haven't who are watching this video, please consider doing so because it's going to help more people discover the channel and more people get more tips on their next flights in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll see you in the next video.